Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about putting this hydrofoil on my boat, The Green Machine, and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. What I'll do first is just head over to the bench, open this packaging up, and we'll just have a quick look at the instructions. This particular hydrofoil is made by Stingray and called their Classic. I'll put a link to it in the description so you can find it if you're looking for one. This one sold for 40 horsepower and up. They come in various size brackets. The Honda on the green machine is exactly 40 horsepower, so this is sort of at one extreme end of the bracket, but we'll see how it goes. We'll go through the advertised features on the box too. So what it's saying is, gets a boat on the plane in less than half the time. And although I've never been particularly worried about how much time it takes to get the green machine on the plane, the sooner you get on the plane, the less wash you make. Because when you first go from in a displacement mode, seeing the water and taking off, that's actually when you put out a fair bit of wash. So depending where you are, that could be a nice side effect of putting this on, is just making less wash. It says it reduces bow rise, so allows it to sit level. Instead of the bow sitting up, it'll bring the stern of the boat up. I'm not so worried about that because often with the green machine, I actually struggle to get the bow up. I need to be able to trim it high, and I want to get the bow up in rough weather to keep the boat dry. So we'll see whether it's sort of good or bad in that sense. It says that it stops porpoising, which is where a boat sort of does this as it goes. Green machine doesn't do that, so I'm not worried about that either. Talks about wipes out cavitation, think it's more ventilation, we should write to them. Delivers true stabilization, I don't know what that means. Aids pulling skiers, I don't do that. Saves fuel, that's good. Before we do this install though, I'll just show you some footage I took this morning of the green machine on the water without this hydrofoil installed. I don't have a trim tilt gauge on the dash of the green machine, and I normally run with it trimmed all the way down anyway, so I've never really had a problem with this boat. A big part of purchasing a hydrofoil for many people is sort of solving a problem the boat has. So in this case it's not really a true test in the sense that the boat actually doesn't have any real problems. But we'll give it a go anyway. What I'm going to do is trim the motor up as much as I can until it starts to ventilate. And then I'll just have a look and there should be some sort of transit, some part of the outboard I can see. And that'll give me a sense of how high it actually is trimmed up, at least relative to after I put the foil on. Before I do that, I'll go grab Eddie the Wonder Dog because uh, somebody commented the other day they see him in the intro and they don't uh, ever see him in videos. So I'll I'll go and grab him and he can help. Come on, Eddie. Jump in. There we go. So it's a pretty nice flat day today, which is good. Perfect for doing these sorts of tests. You gotta be lucky sometimes. What I'll do now is we'll just go down, just do one run, trimmed up as high as I can, see if I can get some sort of way of measuring that. Then we'll do a few turns as well. I'll point the camera backwards as we're doing these runs rather than sort of yakking the whole time. And hopefully we'll be able to sort of hear when it starts to ventilate. So here we go. You can hear pretty clearly when it starts to ventilate. So what I'm going to do is sort of basically sitting at my eye height now, look back, see which part of the leg I can see, and use that as a judgment of how high it is, and hopefully that'll be meaningful in some way. So I've marked a line on the leg of the outboard level with the transom bracket. So I think with the boat sitting level in calm water, that should give me a reasonably accurate indication to measure against of how high up it is trimmed now. What I'm going to do now is do another run, similar run, trim it up till it starts to ventilate, trim back down, and then we'll start doing a few turns. What do you think, Eddie? You do look like a drowned rat. Grow some hair back. You can hear it ventilate straight away again. So with it trimmed as high as I can without it ventilating a straight line, you only have to do a reasonably gentle swerve before it starts to ventilate again. So we'll see if there's any difference there as well. Although I mostly run with the boat trimmed all the way down, there is one reason I like to trim it high, and that's if it's a rough day, just to get the bow up to keep you dry, it rides nicer through the waves and everything. So if a uh, hydrofoil allows me to trim the bow higher and not ventilate, then I think it will... Mm, jellyfish, I'll show you these. We've got loads of these jellyfish at the moment. Go on, Eddie, eat it. Ed, leave it alone. He takes me too seriously. He loves chasing anything in the water. You're a born fisherman, aren't you, Ed? 
so they're the main two tests I wanted to do before installing the hydrofoil. I know they're not hugely scientific, but I do think it'll give me a good sense when I put it on of how different it feels. All right, now we know what it was like, let's go and pop it on the boat. The instructions for the install are pretty straightforward. All they're saying is lay it on top of the outboard's anti-ventilation plate, push it as far forward as the boat will allow, or the outboard will allow, and then we're just gonna mark it up for true. It's actually got a little divot here that keeps the center of the back. And then the front, I've got these two corners, so that'll tell me whether I'm straight and true on the boat itself. Then I'll just mark the four drill holes. The back holes on this are slightly deeper, so this pen doesn't reach through, so I'm just gonna grab it and scribe. This is what we've ended up with. These two holes are reasonably close to the back here. Probably can't see that with the glare. And these ones are here. Because the hydrofoil hooks in along here, it's centered there, I know. So I might just quickly measure outside edge to these marks, just to make sure I've got it on square. These marks are 14 millimeters from both sides, so I think it's pretty good to drill. I'll just mark all these with a punch so that the drill doesn't go wandering around. There's two lengths of bolts in the kit. They're short and they're long, so obviously the longer ones are gonna go at the back where that hole was deeper on the plate. I'm just gonna measure the diameter of them so I can pick the right drill bit. So there's six mil bolts, a little bit over. I'll go grab a six mil drill bit. The bolts go all the way through into some nylocks, so I don't need to drill this too small and tap it or anything like that. So I'm just gonna drill them the full six mil so they can push straight through. Because those bolts came out at 6.11 millimeters, I might find I need to go to a six and a half millimeter drill bit, but I'll start with the six, so I can always take more out. Aluminium's pretty soft. I'm not worrying about having oil and a slow speed drill and all that kind of thing. If I do a test fit on these bolts, they're still a little bit tight. You could definitely tap a thread through. They're not too tight, but the idea is they push through. So I'm gonna go up to six and a half mil. Yeah, that's good now. So six and a half it is. You get four rubber washers as a part of the mounting hardware and these go on the bottom side of the hydrofoil. And then we pop this on. And then our mounting screws go from the underside up. The nuts on the top here, these nylocks fall down into a little captivated space there. So no washer or anything underneath that, just straight in. Now I'm just gonna trim the motor up to make it easier to get to the Phillips heads on the bolts from underneath. No huge trick to tighten them up other than tighten them in a bit of a star pattern and don't over tighten them, just let the Nylux do their job. Doing these bolts up, it's probably easier to take the prop off first, but I'm just gonna work around it. So now they're all run down. Just tightening them up in a bit of a star pattern. It's kind of done. Pretty straightforward, really. All right, next thing to do is go and take this boat back out on the water and repeat those tests. Well, here we are back on the water, much later in the day, obviously. I didn't actually do any quantifiable tests of how quickly the boat got on the plane before, but I'll take it a bit of a run now and just see if it feels any different. One thing I can tell straight away is that it doesn't feel like the bow lifts and then the boat comes on the plane. It actually feels a bit like it sort of lifts the whole thing much more sort of horizontally to the surface, which is interesting. Because of that, not having that phenomenon of sort of sticking the stern in first, it definitely I think will make less wash and maybe you do get on the plane faster because of that. That's never really worried me, but it's interesting to feel it. All right, now I'll do the same thing we did this morning, which is run along, see how high I can trim it before it starts to ventilate, trim it back down, then start doing some turns. I'd 
say I can trim the motor up to about the same height it could before and turning it's interesting you actually instead of getting this sort of sudden catastrophic ventilation you get it sort of sucking a bit of air then it catches again it feels like it sort of oscillates between ventilating and not a little bit so I guess you could call that an improvement the most noticeable improvement for me really is just taking off in a straight line the boat stays much flatter as it comes on the plane instead of going bow up and I think that's more comfortable for people puts out less watch has less things flying everywhere in the boat so I think that's definitely an improvement one other thing I've noticed in the past when I've had these ventilation plates on is if you come into a wharf with a vertical pile, I also find they act as quite good prop guards just to stop the prop knocking against a pile like that, dinging the prop, stalling the motor, whatever. So I think that's actually sort of a, not really an advertised benefit, but I actually think it's one that I notice more than the dynamic benefits. When it comes to the question of should I put one on my boat, to me it comes down to does the boat have a problem? Does it ventilate even when the motor's trimmed down? In which case, yeah, you probably need a long shaft or mount it low or whatever. If the boat porpoises a bit where the bow sort of bounces up and down, that can be trimmed, but maybe a hydrofoil will help you with that problem as well. I've also heard of people who've had boats that just haven't run true in the water. They've sort of got on the plane, and it's not so much because of the sort of transverse thrust of the prop. Maybe the hull's just not quite right, not truly symmetrical, and it runs at a bit of an angle. And I've heard people have put a hydrofoil on and solved that problem. So I think the bottom line for me is if your boat's running fine, there's no point. If you find there's a problem, maybe it's worth experimenting as a way to solve that problem. All right, sun's come out now and I can't be bothered changing the exposure, so it's time to go. I hope this gives you an idea of maybe certainly how to install one of these and maybe what some of the benefits might be for you. I haven't noticed any huge improvement with this boat, but then again, the boat didn't have any problems to start with, so your mileage may vary. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you next week. See ya.